Every day has been the worst day. Israel outdoes itself in brutality and destruction every day, so every day is the worst day. The day that Yoav Gallant announced that Palestinians would be denied food, water, and aid and supplies was the worst day. The day that the Israeli officials announced that they were rolling out the Gaza Nakba was the worst day. The day that they sieged and surrounded Al Shifa Hospital, bombed the maternity ward, bombed the outside clinic was the worst day. The day that I read that the director of Al Shifa Hospital was calling on the world for assistance because people were screaming of thirst was the worst day. The day that Israel dropped six one-ton bombs on the Jabalia refugee camp was the worst day. Every day after that was the worst day because Israel continued to bomb Jabalia refugee camp every single day after that, but the media didn't report on it. The day that we watched the Al Nasser hospital premature babies be discovered in their hospital beds decomposing was the worst day. The day that we watched photos and videos of dozens of Palestinian men who were kidnapped from one of the schools where they were sheltering with their families and they were taken by the Israeli occupation forces, stripped of their clothes, blindfolded, forced to kneel, only to be taken away in the backs of trucks was the worst day. The day that I watched hundreds of thousands of Palestinians be forcibly displaced walking on Salah al-Din Road from the north part of Gaza to the south in images that are reminiscent of the Nakba of 1948, images our grandparents created for us when they told us stories of the Nakba. That was the worst day, watching the Nakba of 2023 play out on our phones was the worst day. The day that we read accounts of Palestinian families whose children they were carrying in their arms as they were being forcibly displaced and their children were sniped by Israeli snipers and they were forced to lay their children's bodies down on the ground and continue marching. The day that report came out, that was also the worst day. Every day I see a video of a Palestinian toddler whose head has been blown off, split open, or a Palestinian child whose limbs are missing after being hit in an airstrike. Those days are also the worst days. The day I saw the faceless boy with both of his legs blown off, that was the worst day. The day I saw the young Palestinian girl who had been completely disemboweled and whose intestines were outside of her body, that was also the worst day. Every day I see a child who has had to undergo amputation after being injured in an airstrike most of the time without proper anesthesia was the worst day. The day that we heard the report of a Palestinian physician having to amputate his own child without anesthesia and whose child actually succumbed to his wounds, that was also the worst day. The day that we heard that disease began to spread in Gaza and when an Israeli official wrote an op-ed saying, let the disease spread, it will help us achieve our objectives quicker, that was also the worst day. Every day has been the worst day, because every day is the worst day for some family, for someone on the ground. And we are, as a community, every day grieving every attack as if it's an attack on us, on our families, on us as individuals, because every attack against any Palestinian family is an attack against all of us. So every day has been the worst day. It's so essential in this moment to center Palestinian voices. We are credible narrators of our own lived experience. And unfortunately, the corporate media does not allow us to present our lived experiences to the world and to contextualize our realities. That's why it's so important to support alternative media that does give Palestinians a platform amplifies their voice and allows them to tell their stories. Join the future of journalism. Join Double Down News on Patreon.